Good morning. We are transmitting live from San Diego, California, from the studios of KPBS located in San Diego State University. Greetings to our participants from Mexico, Re Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, Peru, Paraguay, Ecuador, Brazil, Bolivia, Argentina, and the United States of America. We would also like to welcome today our friends from the Open University of Portugal who for the first time are linking up with us through digital video telephony with our program and from the old continent. Once again, we would like to thank Telecomunicaciones de México, PanamSat, BrazilSat, NawalSat for their satellite linkage services that allow us to reach all of you through the wonder of telecommunications. Welcome to this program. Client-Oriented Performance Management, The Missing Link, which is the 12th and last video conference of our series of 1996 entitled Strategies for Global Competitiveness. I am Armando Osorio and I will be the moderator for this program. We would like to remind the coordinators at each receive site to fill out the attendance sheets with the names of the people who are interested in obtaining the certificate or diploma and mail it to our university, to the ITC, before December 13. Today's program will have three presentation modules and two question-answer sessions. We look forward to your participation. Today's topic is very important because of the, the spirit of providing customers with a good uh, service has been the basis for many of the new management focuses. And the, one example of this is the total quality management movement. As we approach the 21st century, this philosophy will uh, make that will have all successful organizations managing their performance according to a total quality client orientation. This is no longer, uh, global competitiveness is no, no longer focused only on production but also on the customer satisfaction. Our speaker will present several concepts and practical guidelines to develop a customer service culture and will also focus on performance management consistent with this new imperative of the global competitiveness of the future. It is a pleasure for me to introduce to you our expert speaker, whom we already know, Mr. Jerome Finnegan. Mr. Finnegan is Manager for Resor Human Resources at Xerox Corporate Research and Technology in El Segundo, California, and he has been serving in different capacities since 1966 in the area of human resources at Xerox Corporation in Los Angeles and Rochester, New York. Mr. Finnegan was an early advocate of quality circles in, during the 70s, and he was quality officer during the implementation of the program on total quality at the division of printing systems in, in Xerox Corporation. Mr. Jerome Finnegan is the author of a recently published book called, uh, entitled The Manager's Guide to Benchmarking, and he has co-authored two books with uh, Dr. Warren Schmidt on qu total quality entitled The Race Without a Finish Line, America's Quest for Total Quality, and TQ Manager, A Practical Guide to Managing in a Total Quality Organization. Welcome, Mr. Finnegan. Let us begin with just one introductory question. All of us understand that we must work in order to give, provide our clients and customers very good service. But how can we do this and at the same time optimize our performance and profitability of our businesses? Thank you, Armando. Uh, that's a very good question. And I, I would hope that by the time this broadcast is ended, we will have provided a very detailed and complete answer. But let me just say that customer satisfaction is important because it's the basis of revenue. And without revenue, uh, there's no company. Thank you. Very interesting. Let us start now with the first module where Mr. Finnegan will give us an introduction to the topic that we're going to talk about today. Thank you. Thank you. As we all know, the new global economy is growing rapidly in unique and in challenging ways. And as the economy grows larger, it is also becoming more competitive. In response to this increasingly competitive world, many organizations have turned their fo focus on four interrelated strategies. One, 
radically increasing the clock speed to their, of their activities to reduce the time to market. Two, simplifying their work processes to reduce cost, complexity, and response time. Three, empowering people by pushing decision making down. And four, championing customer needs and customer satisfaction. It is this fourth strategy that I want to explore with you today. Establishing management systems based on customer needs and customer satisfaction. Our program today will be in three segments. In the first segment, we'll consider the importance of providing good service to customers by becoming their champion and by knowing why satisfied customers sometimes change suppliers. In the second segment, we'll look at the process of customer satisfaction in terms of three important tools, a balanced scorecard, the service profit model, and the importance of trust. The final segment will consider two elements essential to establishing a culture of customer care, building a learning organization and employee empowerment. Both concepts have been presented in previous International Training Center video conferences. In the final analysis, the organizations that will survive and flourish in the new economy are those that continually work to understand the relationship between the satisfaction and loyalty of its customers and the goals of its business units. Horst Schulze, president and CEO of the Ritz-Carlton Company, the 1992 winner of the Malcolm Baldridge Quality Award, put it this way, unless you have 100% customer satisfaction, and I don't mean they are just satisfied, I mean they are excited about what you are doing, you have to improve. When you have 100% customer satisfaction, you have to make sure you listen just in case they change so you can change with them. Achieving a customer-based culture in an organization is not easy. For one thing, it requires that you become the champion of your customers as opposed to defending the organization. W. Edwards Deming, the guru of quality, made this point emphatically when he said, Profit comes from repeat customers, those that boast about the product or service. Achieving Deming's goals means that you consider three realities about the competition in a customer-centered economy. First, make your service more seamless than your competitors. By that I mean removing some of the common hassles that distract customers from their enthusiasm for your product. Second, Fill your customers' value-driven needs. Every industry has a price of entry, the ante you have to pay to get into the game. For example, in the airline industry, there are five basic services that every airline has to provide. One, they have to get the passengers where they want to go. Two, they have to get them there safely. Three, they have to take them when they want to go. And four, provide some nourishment, and in today's world, five, let them accrue frequent flyer miles. Third, customers increasingly want a company to desire to help them. Research shows that customers today take the basics of service for granted. They want to be treated in a personal and caring way. Said another way, they want value for their money. British Airways is one company that is trying to do this. In order to make a customer's travel experience seamless, personal, and caring, they continually ask customers to describe what a positive experience should look and feel like. British Airways has distilled these responses that they've received into two service principles that are enshrined in corporate goals. One, provide overall superior service and good value for money in every market segment in which we compete, and, to ex and two, to excel in anticipating and quickly responding to customer needs and customer activity. To become a champion for your customers like British Airways, I think, I think organizations have to pursue four objectives. One, use customer feedback to improve the quality of your services. Two, practice customer retention not adjudication by assuring your customer service activities 
meet the customer's needs and not the organization's. Three, measure your effectiveness in retaining customers with what resources are available to you and conduct internal reviews of your programs. In other words, assess your business units on the basis of their customer retention rates and return on investments in customer satisfaction. Four, strive to prevent service problems through employee empowerment and teamwork. For an organization to be a champion for its customers means that employees must recognize that retaining the customer is job one. This begins with accepting that there can never be a debate about whether a customer is correctly perceiving the facts of a complaint. I think that starts with your staff understanding three traps about customer complaints. Trap one, when a customer complains, if the organization replies that events did not happen as the customer suggests, then it is likely that the customer will perceive that the organization is calling him a liar. Trap two, if after investigating a customer's complaint, the company only responds back to the customer that events indeed took place as the customer claimed, then the customer could become even more agitated by concluding that the company did not believe him at first. And trap three, if in the course of responding to the customer, the organization relays information that the customer did not know, the customer may think that the company is trying to make excuses for their poor service. Either one of these responses is certain to make a bad situation worse. To avoid falling into these traps and to make your customer's complaint a win-win for you both, I recommend four actions that you should always take. Number one, apologize and own the problem. Customers do not care whose fault it was or who was to blame. They want an apology and they want someone to champion their cause by correcting the problem. Number two, do it quickly. Aim to reply to that customer the very same day, and if that is not possible, certainly within 72 hours. Research shows that 40, 40 to 50 percent of customers who contact an organization with a complaint will change suppliers if it takes longer than five days to respond. A speedy reply demonstrates your sense of urgency and the importance of your customer. Number three, Assure the customer that the problem is being fixed. Customers can be retained if they are confident that the operational problem that they encountered will truly be addressed and their loss, if any, replaced. Number four, do it by phone. Customers with problems are always delighted to have the organization call them. Time and again, research has shown that customer satisfaction and customer loyalty are not fixed measures. This research suggests the importance of five aspects of the relationship between satisfaction and loyalty that an organization ignores at its peril. First, except in a few rare instances, complete customer satisfaction is the key to securing customer loyalty, which in turn generates superior long-term financial performance. The research tells us that in intensely competitive markets, there is a tremendous difference between the loyalty of merely satisfied customers and completely satisfied customers. Second, even in markets with relatively little competition, providing customers with outstanding value may be the only reliable way to achieve sustained customer satisfaction and loyalty. Let me step and make a point. There are two types of loyalty true long-term loyalty and what is called false loyalty. A variety of factors can generate false loyalty or make a customer seem deeply loyal when they are not. These factors include government regulations that limit competition, high cost of switching such as the cost of changing hospitals in the middle of a medical treatment, proprietary technology that limits the alternatives, and strong loyalty promotion programs such as frequent flyer plans. 
It is therefore absolutely critical for an organization to excel both in defining its target customers and delivering a product or service that completely meets their needs. Third, very poor service or products are not the only cause and may not even be the main cause of high dissatisfaction. Often the company has attracted the wrong customers or has an inadequate process for turning around the right customers when they have had a bad experience. Customers typically fall into one of two categories, the right customers or the target group, whom the company should be able to serve well and profitably, and the wrong customers, those whose needs it cannot profitably serve. Having the wrong customers is the result of a flawed process for attracting or obtaining customers. Fourth, different satisfaction levels reflect different issues and therefore require different actions. The levels of satisfaction among targeted customers are a good indicator of the level of quality of the products or services that are, re that are being received. But the way to raise the level of customer satisfaction from neutral to satisfied or from satisfied to completely satisfied is not just a matter of doing a better job of delivering what the company is currently delivering. The way to raise the bar on service performance is to emphasize three elements that affect customer satisfaction. The basic elements of product or service that customers expect all competitors to deliver, like customer assistance or order taking, things that make your product or service incrementally more effective and easier to use. A recovery process for counteracting bad experiences. Extraordinary services that so excel in meeting the customer's personal preferences, services that appeal to their value system or solve their particular problems. Value additions that make your product or service seem customized. Fifth, even though the results of customer satisfaction surveys are important, indicators of the health of the business relying solely on them can be misleading. While surveys can provide leading indicators of market shifts, a clear sense of product or service attributes that individual customers value, they cannot supply the breadth and depth of information about customers needed to guide an organization's strategy and product innovation process. Let me build on the importance of such a satisfaction loyalty link by talking for a moment about my own company, Xerox. Xerox's intense interest in measuring customer satisfaction springs from a set of beliefs that high quality products and associated services that are specifically designed to meet customer needs will always create high levels of customer satisfaction. Xerox is convinced that this high level of satisfaction leads to greatly increased customer loyalty. We further believe that increased customer loyalty is the single most important driver of our long-term financial performance. While these assumptions might seem relatively simple, our experience generally shatters the conventional wisdom. I say this because at Xerox we have learned that totally satisfied customers are six times more likely to repurchase Xerox products over the next 18 months than our satisfied customers. The implication is that merely satisfying customers who have the freedom to make choices is not enough to keep them loyal. The only true loyal customers are totally satisfied customers. Research of five market areas, personal computers, hospitals, local telephones, airlines, and automobiles show that only telephones, who have a nearly complete control over their customers, is the only one for which the relationship between satisfaction and loyalty turned out exactly as one would expect. Customers remain loyal no matter how dissatisfied they were. In the other four markets, the experience is much the same as we have at Xerox. It is important for us to note that these marketplace realities are not limited to the United States. They are concepts that apply throughout the world, regardless of cultural preferences or styles. People are people, and given the opportunity, we all want the most value we can get for the least cost and we want it without hassle. The message is clear. 
retaining the right customers is profitable and creating customer loyalty by creating totally satisfied customers is key to long-term financial performance. How do you do this? I believe you can do this by creating an organization that excels in listening to its most valuable customers. Creating data that enables you to measure the kinds of performance that create value for those customers so that you can improve performance and spot and correct any weaknesses. And by recognizing that the people on the front line are the ones who ultimately create value since they are the ones who determine the kinds of experience that the company generates for its customers. Accomplishing this requires an organization focus on three actions. First, obtaining competitive data so that the organization can measure and benchmark its operating performance. Two, getting employees to consistently deliver superior service. This may seem like a difficult task in countries that don't have a long history of, of a service economy, but in Latin America, I suspect, it may be easier than most. In my experience, Latin American temperaments are largely humanistic. People do business with people, not necessarily with their companies. This propensity for the personal touch is the foundation of providing customers what they want by being open with their relationships and building a relationship with them often, more often than not, they will find themselves wanting to please their customer, which is what you want to have happen. Three, educating every employee who interacts with customers to listen to them and giving them the freedom to act within specified boundaries by impressing upon them that in a service business the customer doesn't expect everything will go right all of the time. But the big test is what you do when things go wrong. If you act quickly and in the most positive way you will always get very high marks from the customer. Remember, recovery matters as much as trying to provide good service since occasional service failure is unavoidable. Four, the key is listening. Listening to customers is central to any customer-oriented management system. But you have to listen for all the messages, all the messages from five key sources. Customer satisfaction indices. You need quantifiable data that can be compared. You can get such data by periodically surveying your customers about their level of satisfaction and plotting the results. Two, feedback from customer complaints and their questions. How do you handle customer questions and complaints? More significantly, what do you do with the input? Do you interpret it, use it in planning, and do you share it throughout the organization? Three, market research. Do you ask your customers traditional questions like, how did you hear about us? What major experiences influenced your decision to try our products or service? While such information is certainly valuable to a sales organization, it is also significant in planning customer satisfaction, satisfaction and retention strategies for the frontline personnel. As your employees interact with customers, how they gather information and feed it back to you is significant not only in maintaining customer satisfaction, but in providing the organization real-time assessments of the state of customer satisfaction. Fifth, strategic activities. Involving the customer in your planning is the surest way of assuring that your products and services have a certain market. For example, Xerox maintains customer focus groups in each of our product categories. MTV, the cable music channel that is geared to 18 to 24 year olds, insists that most of its employees must belong to this demographic target group as a means of providing valid customer input. At Southwest Airlines, they invite frequent flyers to its first round of interviews with prospective flight attendants. In summary, organizations that fail to heed the importance of providing good service to their customers will have a hard time in the new economy. And, but those that desire to delight their customers will have to make significant investments in their people and their customer satisfaction systems. Specifically, there are five investments. Establish a customer complaint database 
so that the customer's input and case history can be shared easily and quickly across the organization. It will make spotting trends easier. Two, redesign your organization's customer service process to minimize the number of steps and people necessary to act on a customer complaint. Th three, throw out the rule book. Empower employees to use whatever resources are necessary to keep the customer's business. If you are measuring the effectiveness and retaining customers, then you can be sure that expenditures will not skyrocket. Four, build inter interpersonal skills. Coach employees on how to allay customer anger, how to negotiate a win-win situation for the customer and the company, how to listen and to empathize, and how to be assertive without being defensive. And teach your employees how to help each other cope with an emotionally grueling job so they won't take it out on customers. Five, encourage customers to communicate. Less than 10% of customers communicate how they feel about service. Of those with complaints, only 8% contact customer relations, and these are usually the most loyal of customers. And of course, use every sort of customer message that is available to you. Ultimately, the success of any customer retention strategy is based on how well you communicate what you learn throughout the organization. An organization can facilitate this by establishing cross-functional teams made up of a wide variety, array of, inter of internal partners from human resources to finance, information management to service, from delivery to sales. Such teams can move more readily, champion a variety of programs aimed at gaining factual information that everyone in the organization can use to identify and solve service problems. Such programs should include conducting monthly meetings with the internal partners to review the state of the nation from the customer's viewpoint. Sharing the results of market research that quantifies, quantifies the cost of customer defection. Making available to the other departments all customer comments received in the analysis of them, including trends and costs. Reporting on the effectiveness of the company's various customer retention efforts and forecasting which service improvements would provide the greatest return on investment. Does all this work? British Airways implemented a strategy based on the five invest investments I just reviewed. Since that plan was put into place, the retention rate among British Airways passengers who complain has more than doubled to about 80%. While its return on investment the value of business from referrals relative to department costs has risen 200 percent. Yes, it works. In the next segment, we'll talk about the processes that are necessary for building customer satisfaction. But right now, let's pause and see what questions you might have. Okay. We are now going to have our first question and answer session. We will try to take as many questions as possible, but please, as always, try to make only one question per phone call and try and be brief. You can call directly to our studio to the phone numbers or fax numbers that are now appearing on your screen. We remind you also that you must stay away from the monitor to avoid interferences and feedback. Uh, the first question is coming from Mexico, National Autonomous University from Mexico, Hispan American University from Coacalco. How can you involve in uh, these small enterprises in, con in countries that are in the midst of crises, economic crises, in order to have them involved, uh, get them involved in this process of customer, customer satisfaction? That's a very good question. Um, any organization um, is made up of a set of of key work processes that affect its success. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of uh, my remarks that uh, time to market, as an example, is uh, one such process. Uh, another such process, in, in my judgment, is customer satisfaction, customer relations, and there are perhaps many others. And organizations that are feeling 
extreme competition or expense problems need to work on all of their processes. Ultimately, the success of any organization is the value that its customers or users place upon it. And uh, it is necessary uh, that we um, it is, it is necessary that we um, we work on all of these processes with with the with an eye on the end user or the customer at all times. Uh, an organization that only attempts to correct its internal processes and re-engineer itself and restructure itself to, to control expenses without focusing on the people who use its service may find itself a very efficient organization with no customers at all. Saludamos ahora a la Comisión Federal de Electricidad, Auditorio Atoyac, Atoyac Auditorium from the Federal Commission, Power Commission. Good morning. What are the requirements that an organization needs to have when they have in their personnel policies for the employee to understand really the importance of customer satisfaction and the importance of customers? That's a very good question. Uh, it, it, you can't just wish to have uh, good customer satisfaction and just wish to have your employees uh, behave the way you want. You'll, you're going to have to make the investment in some forms of training. Um, you need to state to employees what your policy is. I mentioned uh, British Airways and its two strategic objectives. Those, uh, those objectives are communicated to all their employees so that one employees know that that's a value. That value gets reinforced with the kind of training that is then provided to employees on how to deal with, uh, with customer complaints, customer problems, etc. Also, as part of that, the organization has to decide what kind of authority, what kinds of boundaries it wishes to establish in which employees may act. Um, when a problem is encountered, how far can the employee go to, uh, to satisfy the problem on the spot for the customer? So what I'm saying is regardless of the organization, whether you are strictly a service organization or you will provide products uh, or you are in the retail business, the, the way to customer satisfaction is, is through the employees who interact with the user and you're one, going to have to explain to the employee the importance of that behavior, two, what those behaviors are, and three, uh, how empowered uh, is that employee to act? Argentina, the next question is coming from Argentina, from the Instituto Nobel Rio Tercero, Cordoba province. Good morning. We, it has been shown that in the market studies, the people who have been polled in a very high percentage really lie. Are there any other methods to monitor this client satisfaction that is not the polls, other than the polls, and how are those methods, if you know of them? Um, well, first, I don't, I, I don't know if that's altogether true. I, I've heard that said about, um, about the polling places in, in uh, political situations, but uh, I'm not very certain that when it comes to feedback on services that we receive,